This is my baseball shirt. It is the result of four months worth of learning about pattern drafting. This film, I'm gonna show you almost everything you need to know in order to make one of these for yourself. I'll explain later. The plan is to modify my basic body block. I'll add a drop shoulder, split my front pattern, and give it the distinct baseball shaping to the collar. Add a split side seam, allowing me to curve the sides and drop the back. Details will include a partial lining for the collar, buttons, decorative trim, and patches. If you want to follow along at home, you'll be drafting the pattern from a basic body block. I have a full guide on how to draft a basic body block, but you could clone an existing garment or get yourself a commercial pattern. Whatever you choose, you're going to need some tracing paper and a decent straight edge. First, I tape down my body block and overlay another layer of tracing paper. I'm drafting the back pattern first. I copy the center line, side seam and neckline. I'm going to add an extreme drop shoulder to get a similar silhouette to the deviation jacket. On the body, the measurement is from the base of the neck to the bottom of the deltoid. On a Japanese garment, the shoulder line is totally flat, but I'm going to split the difference and put a slight slant on the shoulder. The general rule is, if you're lengthening the shoulder, you want to flatten out the shoulder line. I mark in my shoulder line using where the collar meets the shoulder seam as a pivot point. I measure my shoulder length starting from where the center line and shoulder seams intersect. To finish the armhole, mark a line at right angles from your shoulder seam. This modification will reduce the size of the opening, so you want to drop the underarm point a bit, and join the two with a curve. With a modification like this, you may want to stop here and make a toile to perfect the fit, but I'm pushing on blind. Lastly, I'm going to mark in the back drop. I mark a point on the side seam just above the hip, Strike a straight line below the hip line and draw a smooth curve that joins these two and the back is done. For the front, I tape down another sheet of tracing paper and copy the shoulder, armhole and side seam. For the collar, I'm going to trace the front collar from the original body block and extend it at a slight angle. I want a chunky overlap with the buttons, so mark a line 4cm to the left of the center line and join this to the collar with a flowing curve. I'm freehanding these curves, but a set of French curves may help you. For the drop on the front, I'm going to stay on the hip line and join up to the side seam with a curve. I'll also mark in the original center line and decide the placement for my buttons. I add another layer of tracing paper to draft the lining. I mark in part of the shoulder seam, the collar and front edge. I measure back 10 centimeters from this edge at the hip. The trim will be added to hide where this is sewn in behind the buttons and you want a bit of spacing between the edge of the overlap and the trim. My buttons will have an overlap of 8 centimeters, so 10 centimeter will give a decent gap between the trim and that edge. I mark the 10 centimeters at all the crucial points and join them up. The last thing to draft is the sleeve and I cover that in detail in my sleeve block film. I draft a full length sleeve with my modified armhole measurement, but this was a massive waste of time. That was a lot of drafting. I always mark my chapters so if you're not totally gripped by this, you can skip ahead to the sewing or the final garment. But if you are following along at home, we need to add our seam allowances. The lining will simply be folded over, so we just add a standard seam allowance to the outside edge. I untape this, but I don't cut it out yet. On the front panel, I add the standard seam allowance to the outside edge. On the side seams, I'll use a French seam to hide the raw edges. I add my standard seam allowance, plus the distance between the edge of my presser foot when it's positioned to the extreme right. If you're new to French seams, I cover my technique in this film. I mark in this seam allowance and continue it all along the drop. The arms will also get a French seam, so I mark in the same seam allowance. Finally, on the shoulders, I'll use a flat felt seam for a bit of detail and strength. Again, I have a film that covers flat felt seams in detail, so give this a quick watch too. 
I'm going to have the edge of the seam face forward, so I only add my standard seam allowance on this panel. And that's the front done. On the back, I'll be adding standard seam allowance to the neckline. Double my standard to the shoulder line for the flat felt seam, and my French seam allowance to the arms, sides and drop. I'll also mark that this pattern is cut on the fold. Lastly, I'm going to bring my lining pattern back in. I flip this over and line up the two shoulder seams, on the seam, not where the seam allowance ends. I tape it down and extend the neckline to include the back neckline and the centre line. I extend the inside edge with my 10cm measurement. On the sleeve pattern, I add French seams to the sleeve head and the underarm sleeve. Before I cut out the patterns, I take up the time to mark up each of them with their names, the seam allowance I've used on each part, if they will be cut on the fold, and the direction I want the grain of the fabric to run. And this is my finished patterns. This is where I'm supposed to say join my Patreon to get access to all my patterns, but I don't have any of that. A like and a share would be quite nice though. Anyway, now it's time to sew. For material, I have a £2 bed sheet from the charity shop. I fold it over and lay out the back pattern. Once cut out, I mark the position of the shoulder seam to help align the panels later. For the front panels, I fold the fabric over to cut both sides at once. I also mark in the shoulder seam. Next, I'll cut out the lining. Again, this is on the fold, but because of the way that this folds, I can't lay the pattern with the grain running parallel so this will be cut on a slight bias. Finally, I cut two of the sleeve, again folding the fabric to cut two at once, although I wasn't very careful when choosing where to cut and needed to cut an additional sleeve. One of many. I've been fairly wasteful with my cutting, but there's a lot of fabric in a double bed sheet and I'm only planning to use it for this project. With the parts all cut out, I can now move on to construction but I'm going to run a quick straight stitch on the shoulders and side seams just to get a sense of the fit of the garment. I'm pleased with the body, so take some time to add a sleeve, and I'm happy that I did because this isn't good. With such a massive drop shoulder, the sleeve pattern I had drafted was completely wrong. I really need to adjust the height of the sleeve head. I footer around marking something closer to what I'm looking for, rip the sleeve and mark out a new sleeve head add seam allowance and cut. But pinning this in place, I quickly realised that I need to start again with these sleeves. Pulling out pattern cutting for menswear, it shows that when you reduce the height of the crown point, you need to extend the length of the underarm line. And as far as I can tell, this line should be half the length of your armhole. So having got the new crown point for my fitting, I pull out a fresh sheet of paper. I draw a straight line, this will be my underarm line. I line up the modified sleeve and mark the new crown point. I strike a centre line from that point. Then from the crown point, measure half my armhole length and mark the point that intersects the armhole line. I then repeat this for the other side. I'm going to take the opportunity to shape the curve of the sleeve head to fit my modified armhole and measure in 6cm and 3cm from the underarm point and 12cm from the crown. The length of half the armhole is 30cm. It's straight for 24cm and curves for 6cm. So 6cm is where the curve needs to change direction. 12 and 3 are the halfway points, spreading the curve evenly. I measure in 5mm from the 3cm point and 15mm from the 12cm point and connect it all up with a flowing curve. This has added an extra centimetre to the armhole length that I will accept as my easing. I then add a decent amount of length to the sleeve that I can finesse later once I know the sleeve head is working. I add my seam allowance and test the new pattern on the garment and yeah. this is working. Right. I pin out some of the fabric on the underarm and mark the point where I want the sleeve to end. I rip the running stitches and modify the pattern to match my fittings. I can now deal with the last of the prep work. I need to decide which side of the fabric will be the facing. The right side is pilled and fuzzy, while the wrong side has quite a coarse grain to it. I commit to using the wrong side as the hero side. 
I'm going to run a line of zigzag stitch on the outside edge of the lining and the bottom of the sleeve to stabilize them as these are the only raw edges that will be visible on the inside of the final garment. I'm also going to add a strip of fusible lining to the front panels where they will overlap. This will make adding the buttonholes easier and strengthen the fabric where the buttons will be attached. I start construction proper with the shoulder seams. With right sides together, I match up the seam lines. This should leave an excess of fabric on the back panel. The excess is folded over, pinned in place and edge stitched together. I then fold the seam over, press and pin before top stitching with a twin needle. I repeat this on the other shoulder and we can tackle the side seams. Laying out the garment with wrong sides together, I pin the seam and mark where I want the side seam to split. I measure in 14mm from that point and strike a line at 45 degrees. When sewing the first line of stitching with the needle set to the extreme right, stop when you hit the angled line and turn your work to follow that line to the end and stop. I cut into that point but try to make sure that I don't cut the actual stitching and trim off excess around the corner. I repeat this on the other side. I do the uncomfortable thing of running the sewing with the garment on the inside of the machine so that I can finish on the turn rather than start there. Just make sure to change the position of the needle to the extreme left. I now turn the garment to the wrong side and press the seam. You can see that I have this nice pointy bit at the end of the side seam. I take this to the machine and finish off the sides. I can now add the lining. I pin the body and the lining right sides together and run round the edge with a straight stitch. Before I press the lining into its final position, I snip it around the curves for some easing. This is flipped over and pressed, making sure the seam is turned under a little. I turn to the wrong side again and edge stitch the lining into play. This might be unnecessary, but I've done it now. I also add a top stitch with the twin needle because I want to. To hide that stitch I've just added, I add my trim with the twin needle using the lining stitch as a guide. And it looks all right. Okay, sleeves. I prepare the cuffs by flipping the excess to the wrong side and stitching it in place. I then add the trim over the top and with wrong sides together, stitch this first part of the French seam. Turn inside out, press and stitch again. With the sleeve still inside out, I put it inside the body. I line up the side and underarm seam and pin the sleeve in place, making sure the two French seams lay in different directions to reduce bulk. I run a straight stitch around the sleeve and flip the garment out, so the sleeve is right way out and the body is inside out, and add the final line of straight stitch. Just the finishing details now. I bring back my front panel pattern and mark out the placement of the buttonholes. I machine sew my buttonholes with my buttonhole attachment. I sew on my patches, here's one I made earlier, hem the bottom, and finally, hand sew on the buttons, and this is the finished garment. I was so close. It's almost perfect, but there are a few glaring faults that undermine the whole garment. The biggest being my flat felt seam. I forgot how to sew a flat felt seam, and for some reason got snippy with the scissors. After quickly checking my handy flat felt seam video, I realized what I had done and had to start again. But the damage had been done. I had pulled the seam forward on the right. This makes the garment sit unevenly across the shoulders, pulling the buttons out of alignment and reducing the size of the armhole on the right, which gave me too much excess to spread around the sleeve head, which exaggerated the issues I have with my sleeve pattern. The shape of the sleeve head is just not quite right. The sleeve seems to twist around the arm and pops out a little at the crown point. I probably needed to drop the crown point a little more, but honestly, I don't understand the why on this. If you have any insight on how to properly match a sleeve head to such an extreme drop shoulder, please let me know in the comment. Otherwise, there are some construction faults. I've picked up the raw edge on the French seams here and there. I should have basted my trim before sewing it down as I fell off the path a few times. And the finishing on my split seam is a bit rough, but honestly, I'm really happy with this garment. This marks a huge progression for me.
This is the first garment that I've properly self-drafted. And had I not made a stupid mistake on the shoulder seam, there really wouldn't have been much to be unhappy with. I can be confident in my body block going forward, as the fit and shape feel really good. There's still some work to be done on my sleeves, but I'll get there with practice. The chunky buttons, trim and patches all feel like a success, or at least a realisation of the style I'm going for. I feel like this garment communicates the look I'm trying to achieve with my designs and is a solid platform from which to grow. If you did try and follow along and make your own baseball shirt, please let me know how you got on in the comments. And if there is anything you need me to explain more thoroughly, feel free to ask. If you got this far into the video, it is very much appreciated. You might want to subscribe if you haven't already or share it with a Swiss friend. I'll link all the other films referenced along the way in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day.